and a warm welcome once again to a rather blustery Assen in Holland for the fifth round of the World Superbike Championships. A glorious summer's afternoon, even though it's only April. We used to be here in September. They changed the date, but it hasn't changed the enthusiasm of these fans from both Holland, Britain, Belgium, Germany, and all over Europe who've come to this famous circuit. And a lot of them have come to see this man, James Tozen, championship leader at the moment and going for two race wins on the day. Something he's never achieved before in his career. Seven years in World Superbikes and already a world champion. But this is something different this year. A very competitive field, including some of the greatest riders in the world. Corsa, Biaggi, Bayliss. And Tosin is a match for all of them. In fact, he's well ahead. He's leading the championship at the moment with 176 points. Ahead of Biaggi's 148. Harger. It's doing well. There's the famous swing arm that they've uh, got from Kenny Roberts that's been so useful to them, according to them, in the latter stages of the races. And it's uh, certainly helped them in last round's race here earlier today. Roger Burnett, his manager, and the man who took pole position in the first ever World Superbike race. And what a history it has been over those 20 years since Roger's first pole. The enthusiasm and the road sales of these bikes has just gone through the roof, especially here in Holland. Yamaha, Europe based here in Holland. And in fact, the Yamaha boys went down to the factory earlier in the week. And Hager, definitely a man to watch. He starts 15th, but it doesn't seem to bother him. We predicted that he would come through, and he did. Toshi to his right there, pockets full, certainly from the race one, saying, don't look at my belly. And uh, knowing he's on international television around the world, from Japan to Australia, Asia, and of course Europe. And he's quite a fun guy, Toshi. Needs to be hanging out after, after Hager. Hard work sometimes, his old Nori. Not on the bike, though. Not on the bike, because Noriyuki Hager, different man this year. He, I think, senses that uh, A, time is running out on his hopes of ever becoming a world champion. Came so close in 2000 with Yamaha. But he's looked relaxed, he's looked fast, and he's even got time to make fun at Toshi, his <laughs> man who can. Great crowd here at Assen, and as you can see, they are waiting for the gladiators of World Superbike to come out on track. And here is one of them, the self-made Roman Emperor, Max Biaggi. And second place in the championship, but he's got to be watching it now because four points behind is Haga, and he needs a good result from this race, number three. He is currently using the Mitsubishi Electronics system, which you see just in front there. Uh, his teammate Kangiyama is developing the more favoured, certainly with Ducati and Honda and Yamaha, or I should say with Ducati and Yamaha, the Magneti Morelli system, the Italian system. Biagi just waiting, having a little moment to himself to think about what is coming next. And I'll tell you what we've got coming next. We've got Warwick Nowland, two-time world champion, who's been down in the pits, shifting around, trying to find some information out. And uh, Warwick, uh, what is the latest from down there? Uh, uh, first of all, Corsa. Uh, here we saw have a bad spill. How is he? The big news is Troy Corsa, and uh, he, he's not very well at all, actually. If he does come out to play in this race, he, he'll probably come out with some pain-killing injections or tablets. Uh, I spoke to his main man, his mechanic, Dave Martin, and he said uh, it's, um, you know, it's, it's not looking good, but uh, he, he's definitely going to try. He's in the garage, and... Um, I've got his number two well, bike There is ready. Dave Martin, your man you mentioned. Yep. Uh, I, I looked at the bike. There's Troy. Well, he's going out for sure. He's got his helmet on, and that means only one thing. Sam won't be too happy about that. That's his wife, Sam Corsa, alongside him. Her eyes went uh, when I said, uh, how is it? And she just looked to the sky. <laughs> so um, it, it wasn't Troy's fault, the crash. Um, we're not exactly sure what the problem was. It was um, something went wrong with the bike. and uh, It was a mechanical it, problem. A mechanical problem, yeah. And, Not uh, Troy's, uh, as I said, no. as we first thought, he'd, he'd had a high side or an accident of some sort, but evidently the, the bike definitely spat him off. And it's a horrible place to get, get spat off there. It's uh, at the end of the back straight, into the right-hander, and as, as you flick the bike left, third gear, high side there. So uh, 
No wonder he's feeling a bit of pain. But well, Corsa almost feels as though he has to race this race because he's fifth in the championship at the moment. He's got 101 points. He's only two points behind Bayliss. And uh, he knows that uh, the championship fight is still very much alive from his point of view. He, perhaps the smartest of all of them when it comes to winning championships, knows that consistency is the key. Zaus is getting ever closer to him. He's only two points behind him. <laughs> and there's Fonzi Nieto giving us a mad wave. That's about the happiest I've ever seen him. He's having a relaxed weekend this weekend. And mm. I'm sure because Laconi's having a rotten weekend, we saw him retire in the first race. But uh, Fonzi Nieto definitely settling in. Uh, he's been here two years, but uh, he just looks more himself now and definitely starting to be faster and faster. Uh, as this uh, Kawasaki team has. Pit lane opens now in less than a minute, so these guys will be out on their way, hence the helmets on. And your thoughts on uh, who's going to take this? My thoughts are Fonzie Nino has got those forks through the triple clamps a long way, um, trying to make that thing steer. It's a tough old job for the boys on the Kawasaki's, but uh, they're, they're st still chipping away at it. But um, my thoughts for the race, well, I, I hope that James Tozen can uh, do the the double dutch and, and take two from two here. But um, I think Corsa, uh, sorry, Bayless, Troy Bayless is gonna come back, as is this man. They both had tire problems in the first race. Troy Corsa went, sorry, Troy Bayless went with the, so, not the hardest choice he could have taken. And that, that was what we saw at the end. It was just worn out. Uh, also so he Ruben. Really, will he go harder now in these hotter conditions? Well, we're, we're just about to get the tyre information from Pirelli, but um, Ruben also had the same problem, so they, they will be changing things for this race, and uh, we'll, we'll give you a, a rundown on what tyres they're on as soon as we get it. Ruben Zass, very much the man at the moment. He's currently sixth in the championship, but only two behind Corsa. And now with Corsa, obviously a little bit crook, as they say in Australia. I would have thought uh, Zass will try to see if he can... Um, points on him if not get ahead by the end of the day my thoughts I hope yes I'd love to see James Tozen get his first double here and you believe that the Tenkata team is certainly capable of it as is James I also like to see Biaggi uh, take a win here because we've got Monza next and that would be so exciting for the Italian fans huge crowd here at Assen they've already been given a real thrill in race one which had everything some really close racing right from the very start Tozen got away well and from the fourth row, so too did Harger. He's just about to pop out to the left-hand side in a moment. And right up the inside came Noriyuki Harger into seventh place after the first corner. Early on, Tozen pulled away at the front. Biagi had a good start. Started from the front row for a change, but it uh, wasn't long before Bayliss ducked him up. And Lanzi thought, well, I'll do the same. Went up the inside. So the Ducatis second and third. Biagi going backwards. Zaus on his tail for a moment as well then. Zaus finally going through both on Biagi and on Bayliss. Tozen continued to lead, but then Harger, where did he come from? Well, he came from 15th, and it was a bit of a surprise for James Tozen. Harger then taking the lead brilliantly. Number 41, as he's done so many times before. Zaz still up there, and battling hard. Had a go at Harger successfully, but it wasn't long before Harger was back through again. Tozen then played the waiting game in third place. Bayliss and Lanzi weren't out of it. The Ducati's not looking as strong as they've done in the past, for sure. Here at the Aston Circuit, remember Carl Fogarty, a 12-time winner. Bayless, a two-time winner himself, a double back in 2001. As the race continued, Tozen back at the front, starting to settle down and starting to eke out some big laps. Very comfortable with his tyre while the others were going backwards, including this man, Bayless. Couldn't hang on to it, although he did try a few desperate moves. That was one of them. And then there was a few desperate moments for poor old James. Held on in there and started to pull away. Hagen then into second place and fighting hard. Zaz continued his quest. Bayliss hung on, but his tyres by this time were falling apart and eventually he would drift back. Corsa going past. Zaz for a moment there. Corsa hanging on in there and up to third place when this happened. Sadly, the bike spitting him off, a mechanical difficulty. And let's hope Corsa is okay. But wheelies all round then for the Tenkata team as James wins another race. That's five. Race wins, five rounds. Tosin on great form. And the wave says it all, but that smile will be right across his face if he can do it again.
Kuhn is once again at the Aston circuit in the district of Drenth in northern Holland. A great venue for motorcycle racing as it has been since 1925. The Netherlands are proud motorcycle fans. And once again, great representation, a huge crowd here. James Tozen on pole position yet again, the winner of the first race. And we await round two, race two of this round five. Next it's Monza in two weeks time, two weeks after that Silverstone. Then in the summer, it's by the beach in Mazzano, Rimini, Bruno and the Czech Republic. And then of course, a brand new race at Vallelunga in Rome and if Max Biaggi is still in contention by then it could be very interesting and of course we finish off in France at Magny Corps. Back to get underway though for the start. Still windy conditions and uh, that was a problem. It hasn't been windy on Friday or Saturday but here race day Sunday. Bright skies, clear skies, no clouds on the sky but uh, a brisk wind and uh, well it's not bothering the Dutch fans in the crowd and Warwick Nowland alongside me, two-time endurance champion and uh, just finished today at 24 Hours of Le Mans. Your thoughts as we take a look at this track? Well, I think it's uh, shaping up to be a bit of a, a copy of race one, but um, I, I, my thoughts are out there for Troy Corsa. Um, definitely uh, a hard fall and, and going to ride with a, a little bit of a, a painkiller, either an injection or a tablet or something. But uh, yeah, you're right. He needs to score some points and not let's see Bayless has jumped ahead of him in the championship now by two points and uh, Corsa needs to, to re-establish himself the, the track temperatures um, risen just a little bit not too much four degrees more than what it was in the first race and perfect conditions really except for the breeze the breeze is a little bit strong but the the temperature for racing is perfect well there is confirmation of the championship 176 Biagi 148, but biagi has got to watch his back because Haga is all over the back of him. He knows that on the track as well as in the print that you see there. Bayliss, though, has moved up, but he another, needs another good result, I think, does Bayliss if he wants to feel as though he can walk away from Assen knowing that he's still in contention. He's currently fourth with 103 points, just a few points behind Haga. Really, I would say we're in a six-way, seven-way battle for the title at the moment with Lanzi on 98 points. But look at the manufacturer's battle too. Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, Ducati, all in a real big battle. I'd have to say one thing we, we may be able to expect is Max Biaggi. He's been a bit of a second race superstar yeah. over this season. Um, always always come out a bit stronger in the second race and certainly at Donington yeah got yeah. a podium there and then a second place in the, in the next race same at Valencia you're right he got a second place there it, it's only he almost develops the bike as the weekend goes on <laughs> I was down with the team um, just be, just before the start here's the grid Tozen, Lanzi, Bayless, Biaggi yeah we'll hear about that in a moment from Biaggi Zaus Corsa, Neukirtner and Kagiyama. Good result for him, trying the new electronic system, remember. Mugridge, Nieto, Rolfo and Jakob Schmertz in 12th position. Laconi, Brooks, Hager and Fabrizio. That's the top four rows. And then Nakatomi, Deed Ellison, who scored points in the last race. Morelli of Italy, 19th. And Svododom in 20th position, another Czech Republic rider on a Yamaha. Go ahead with Biagi. Well, the, the Corona team are sort of shaking their heads a little bit. Um, they know Kagiyama is not 100% uh, up to race pace, and uh, he, he's getting back that way. He's, he's got some work cut out ahead of him over the next few months, preparing for the Suzuka 8 hour as well, but and developing this new uh, electronic system. But, but Biagi, I spoke to the guys down there, and they said the bike is fine. We, we just need Max to, to ride it, and um, it, it should be up further than what it is. So they're shaking their head a little bit. And as I said, second races are always better for Max. So um, hopefully he can uh, turn things around. Well, future's so bright, he's got to wear shades, and they are big ones. But he's wearing them well. The he's Hansbury Honda has not let him down at all, except once at Donington Park. He is literally the rock star, really, isn't he? He's, he, he I, I've heard in the past, part last year actually, a lot of the other riders were a little bit um, in, maybe not in awe, but a little bit envious maybe of James Tozen because he he was, um, you know, winning races, he, he had a great job and 
and uh, he was also a great piano player and singing at, at the end of the show and everything, so he's definitely the man. Lorenzo Lanzi wants to be the man, but he's not quite there yet. 98 points, seventh place in the championship, and on the factory Ducati, the last year of the F07. And here is the world champion, Troy Bayliss. Trying times for him, and I'd love nothing more than him to blitz everyone this afternoon and put himself right back in the firing line. Talking to Ernesto Marinelli, his team engineer. Beautiful looking bike. Ducati always produce great motorcycles. Controversy about next year in the 1098 or the 1200 rule. Ducati want to push it to 1200. Even the Japanese manufacturers naturally want to keep it balanced, but uh, Paolo Flamini and the FIM and the organizers in close discussion. And they've always come up trumps in terms of changing the rules here over the 20 years. There's no reason to think that they can't do it again. Max Biaggi looks on, number three four-time world champion on the back of his leathers. He has four stars for his four world titles and a question mark next to the fifth. Well, those questions are starting to be answered. He's second at the moment, but he needs to stay there. He needs a good result from here. So Bayliss and Biaggi, the two Bs, watch out for them. And also keep an eye on the two Ts, Troy Bayliss and Troy Corsa. And then there's JT. <laughs> the JT, yeah. The JT Factor, don't that forget, is, of course, uh, James Tozen. Don't forget Ruben Zaus. Uh, as I ah, said, the X Factor. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't exactly. resist it. <laughs> exactly, the X Factor will be in there. there as he is. I said, uh, he, he had some tyre problems, just like Bayless in the first race. He'll have made some changes, so he's in fighting form. Chow says they call him. Yeah, he is in fighting form. I've never looked, never seen him look so good in terms of preparing himself for a race just looking comfortable, working hard with his team, feeling comfortable. He didn't have the bike he wanted last year. Now he does. And although it's not a factory spec, it ain't far off. And uh, it's actually, I checked actually, uh, these are the AMA bikes from last year that Neil Hodgson rode. I, I saw on the crankshaft AMA 06. Right. So no question that uh, that's what he's racing. But uh, in terms of the electronics package and everything else, it is pretty much on par with what Bayliss and Lanzi have got. Well, that's the big thing now. It's it's an electronics game, really. Um, and having the right electronics is, is makes the world a difference. There he is, the man well, hello, Mum. Well, I'm a bit crook, Mum. <laughs> but my wife's here, and I've had a bit of a spill, but I'm all right. And you can see that look is almost gritting his teeth a bit. Takes a kiss from the wife. That was Smoke like me a, a kipper, I'll be back for breakfast. That was like, kiss me, darling. <laughs> yeah. You just lent into it. That's yeah. the way to go. Well, when you're a Playboy star from yeah. Monica, that's the way you look at it. Yeah, sure. Talking to Playboy stars, we've now got our Pirelli uh, indication on uh, what the tyres are doing. Efficiently, brilliantly brought to us by Luca. Now, our Pirelli guru. What do you notice straight off the bat about who's running what? As we take a look at Max Neukirchner, I'll let you observe that. And he says, give him a wave, will you? She says, I'm holding my umbrella. I can't do everything. Max Neukirtner looking forward to both Bruno and Germany. Those, he reckons, are his best tracks. And right now, this is his best girl. He knows he's on, on camera. Dark Dog, his sponsor. Well, one of them, anyway, as you can see. Credit Plus, the bank. Several others. We take a look at Yukio Kagiyama. And currently in 12th position with 36 points. As you can see from that record down the left-hand side, it's been an up-and-down season already. Uh, but you know that Yukio will hang on in there, and I, I don't think he's going anywhere in a hurry. And he will come good. And he now has the job of developing the motorcycle. Not the job he probably wanted, but really his championship hopes at 12th position pretty much put him out of contention. So now he will go in search of helping Biaggi get that bike to where it needs to be, and that includes developing the Magneti Morelli uh, ignition system. Okay, tyres. Well, would you believe me if I told you you can go out and buy from the shop, from your local Pirelli dealer, your local tyre shop for motorcycles, exactly the same rear slick that everybody in this field's got on? You can go and put. You can't put it on your road bike because it's not really legal to ride on the road with a slick. If you do a tractor, you can go and put exactly the same tyre on. It's a standard production Pirelli Diablo Superbike SC1 tyre. That's always been their philosophy. Well, I don't think um, all of these tyres are available in the shops because they, they go to a lot softer compound, but everybody's on the hardest compound rear tyre and 
the main changes for we, we haven't been told what what tyres are on in the first race, so we're not sure what the changes were. But uh, I do believe Bayless and Zaus were on a little bit softer rear tyre in and the first race. And that's why Bayless went backwards. Exactly, yeah. But um, the changes we're allowed to know are the front. They've all gone. Uh, well, Bayless, Neukirchner, Muggeridge, Laconi, and Lanzi have gone from a harder rear front to a softer. Sorry, a harder front to a softer front tyre. So um, it, you can expect that Bayless and uh, Zaus will be a lot stronger in this race towards the end of the race. JT keeping everything the same as the first race, and why would you change anything when it all worked perfectly? But the track temperature has come up just a fraction, and sometimes, I, to be honest, I don't think it's going to make much difference. It's three or four degrees higher, and I don't think that's enough to make a considerable amount of difference. Well, we know you're watching around the world, including Russia. Mnet in South Africa, Fox Sports down in Australia, Speed Vision in the USA, Z Sports in India, and around the world, Sky Sports, lest we not forget in New Zealand, Aaron Slide, I'm sure, will be watching, so will Fred Merkel down there. And Roberto Rolfo's fans from Italy will be waiting to see what he can do as he heads towards Monza in two weeks, as we will. And I'll tell you what, if you miss one race, don't miss that one. I've got a bit of a story on Roberto Rolfo, but I'll tell you about it during the race. Okay. Number 44. Work to do, really. He's not going to patch anywhere near. Okay, I can't James hold on anymore. I'll tell Go you on, right tell now. Us now. Okay. Well, Roberto Rolfo is under a little bit of pressure. Pressure indeed by Australian super sport rider Andrew Pitt. Well, I... Yeah, okay. Andrew Pitt is actually being kept now in the team and will ride the super sport bike. And if Roberto Rolfo doesn't um, start to improve then there'll be some changes. Well, and that was the first thing Andrew said to me. I said, are you sticking around? And he said, well, I'd like to, but I'd like to ride the superbike. And that's, you know, he, he, Andrew's always had a cunning way, very intelligent young man, <laughs> of letting you know, media that is, what he wants and what he wants to do and what his plan is. So, good idea by him. Jakob Schmertz, the Czech rider, brother racing in super stock and uh, has had an impressive weekend and he's getting better by the minute. And uh, His name's is Jacob. Right. Jacob. Okay. Okay. In Australia, we call him Jacob. Right, okay. In America, you call him Jacob. Pronounce the J. It's a J. Okay. Jacob. Okay, we're not in those countries at the moment, so we'll, we'll go with Jacob. Okay. And he just, not Regis. Look, Laconi. Yeah, that's that's good. You can say Laconi. L A C O N I. Laconi. Not Laconi or something like that. You know? It's all a load of nonsense. Oh, well, Warwick goes into an elocution lesson of his own doing. I'm Car trying to we'll carry on with this motorcycle race. I'm trying to race. teach the world to speak Australian. You'd like to teach the world to speak Australian. Wonderful. Well, as long as you don't try and teach him to sing. That's what I get. Well, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah, one day at a time. <laughs> OK, so we're about to get underway with World Superbike Race 2 from Assen in Holland one of the greatest circuits, but now changed quite a great deal. You can see now the long straight that used to be there now dives into a very tight right-hander, which is called Harbokt. It's a second gear corner, and it means that the opening salvo of this race so important. As we looked at um, Haga last time, and he did get the start. Now, can't believe he might be able to do that twice in a row, but let's see if he can. I'll put you again on Haga watch to see where he can start from. He's right there on the fourth row, all the way back there. And uh, a long way back from where James Tosin is starting. And Bayliss and Lanzi need a result, so too does Biaggi. Great stories throughout the first two rows. And a lot depends on this race. Tosin going for double. Kagiyama going to try and improve his position and keep with the team and develop that bike. Biaggi needing a result, needing a win, really. Bayliss, without doubt, has to have a win. He needs to get back into contention. It's race two. We're on the warm-up lap. James Tozen is going for the double, his first ever in his career. And on the warm-up lap, here we go. Let's uh, talk round it with uh, Warwick into that first corner, a second gear, and then off to Mardike, which is uh, another second, third gear corner. This is such an important part of the track to, to get away cleanly on the start because it's um, 
as I've said before, it's a funneling effect into that first corner. It tightens up, it narrows down, and you can't run offline because there's no grip out in the, as you can see, that dark section. If you go over into the lighter section, it's dusty and it, it's just got less grip. So, and if you get stuck behind people through here, there's not anywhere to pass because it's so tight. Once you get out of here, it's not so bad. You can get into someone's slipstream, get close enough and try and outbreak up the inside here to, to, to move up a spot. Then you're, uh, you're all in um, file behind each other through here and another corner here, good position if you put yourself in the right place at the right time to get up the inside. Out of here, this is the old circuit which is more flowing and fast and, and just more fun basically. Here's the grid. Tozen in pole position, Lanzi second, Bayliss and Biagi. Zaus, Corsa, Neukirchner and Kagiyama on the second row. Mugridge of Australia, Nieto of Spain, Rolfo of Italy, Schmerz of the Czech Republic, Jakob, Laconi, Brooks, Haga and Fabrizio on the fifth row. Nakatomi, Ellison and Schwabdom also of the Czech Republic. That's how you say it. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go with that one. Thank you. This part of the circuit where they're coming, coming back down towards the final chicane, again, another great place to pass. And as we saw in the first race, lots of desperate moves there. So first part of the circuit, not so good, but um, once you get back to the old bit, it's a lot of fun. There is that last corner, and here's this unique stand. If you see it there, Gert Thiemer Tribune. That's uh, a tribute to Gert Thiemer, one of the famous founding fathers of this circuit. And the actual grandstand is right above the gravel trap. So always an interesting view. Tense moments now for the start of race two. Who's going to take it? Lots of stories to unfold in this one. Can the world champion come good now his injuries are over? Can Biagi keep his second place? Or will Haga go in front of him with another good result? Haga, though, has got to do it from 15th place. On the other hand, James Tosin has been quite supreme. There he is, number 52, in pole position, but he too needs a good start. We're about to get away for race two. Up go the ramps, out go the lights, and away we go. Great start from Tosin, but the Ducatis are there with him. But I think Tosin's going to have the better of them as they run towards the first line. But Biaggi's come good. Here comes Max Biaggi into the hole shot and takes the lead. Just what Mad Max needed. I'll tell you what, he definitely did need it. And I just watched um, uh, Noriyuki Haga off the line. He almost jumped the start. We're going to have to just wait and see if there, there is any problems with jumping the start. Keep an eye on that. But Biaggi leads from Tosin. So great start from Biaggi from the outside of the... Front row there. Oh, and now he's gone wide and blown it completely. Oh. Big mess up from Biagi. Now, what on earth was he thinking or doing there? Well, I'll tell you what, Fonzie Nieto got a good start, but he's muffed that up a little bit too. Corsa with a good start, and, and considering he's not feeling 100%. Yeah, Corsa up to fourth place, but that was terrible. Oh, oh, Nori yeah, Yuki Haga, seventh. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Well, he's done it again. Let's just hope he hasn't done it. And now he's start. got yellow. He's next to Biagi. Up the inside. Not quite. And uh, so already, Haga is making moves. He's gone up from 15th to 7th. It's absolutely incredible. Nobody else can do it. I wish he'd teach the rest of them how to do it. Corsa getting duffed up by uh, Biagi. Well, Corsa ran wide a couple of corners back. He'll come back up the inside, will he? Yep. Yes, he will. So they're fighting with each other. Very close. Oh. Look at Biagi. Oh. He's in the mood. He is in the mood. Boy. Ooh, no Glenn Miller being played, though, but he's in the mood. Great stuff. Wow. Tosin, Bayliss, Lanzi, Zaus, Biagi, Haga, Corsa. But that's changing by the second. Biagi recovering well from Whoa. that uh, moment. And <laughs> once again, the Yamaha up the inside. Oh, and Kagiyama joins the fight. Hello. Kagiyama and his old buddy, Haga. Cross the line comes Tosin. 276, 144.9. Very Haga quick fifth. lap. Haga in fifth spot, first lap from 15th. Unbelievable. Great stuff from Noriyuki Hag, which as I said in race one, if you can make the top six as Zaus oh. takes a look up the inside of Zaus. Oh, oh no! no! Zaus goes down, he oh, tried too Ruben. hard, too early. Ruben Zaus lap. is out. The X Factor is no more. But I think he might be able to get that up and he is going to try. Just too hard in, yeah? To be honest, hmm, Lanzi maybe didn't give him any room. Well, why would he? Well, there's a bit of a line where you, you know, don't want anyone to crash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, anyway. 
Well, I just, you know, I mean, it, it, it's early in the race. Everybody's fighting. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, my question is, why, why, why should he come over for him? I mean, definitely, Sash was coming up the inside there, and he didn't really have the room to go and up the inside there. That's my yeah, humble fair, opinion. You're right, you're right. The second lap, there was, there was no need to, to do something so close so soon. So then, back to the leaders, and it's Tozen, Bayliss, Lanzi, Zaus, obviously out now, Harga moves up to fourth. Oof. And Piaggi's not out of this, but uh, recovering from what was a brilliant start, got the whole shot, and then went backwards, went wide just here, and uh, had to recover again, but has done, thankfully, for him. And Corsa's dropped down to seventh, Kagiyama's eighth, Neukirtner is in the top ten, Laconi, likewise, who retired from race one, is in the top ten at the moment. I just want to see Troy get in front of Max Biaggi here, down the straight. A huge lap from Harger in fourth place, a 139.7. That's a new lap record. <laughs> Unbelievable. And jump start for Morelli, the man who had a crash on Friday, the Italian Pettuccini team has jump started. But that also means that Harger has not jump started. And the man who's flying at 139.7 last time out is in the mix. When I just saw that jump start flash up on the screen, I thought, oh no, not number 41, but unfortunately it wasn't. He's got uh, Lanzi to deal with now, and uh, he's on the charge indeed. Haga on the same settings as race, uh, race one. So again, he had a fantastic race, so no need to change anything. Corsa's hanging on in there, just behind Biagi, as you can see there, we're on him now. Surrounded by his old team. Yes. Well, bikes anyway. Yeah, Kagihama just behind him. And Lanzi looking to get a result. We're keeping a watchful eye on Bayliss. Bayliss it is. And remember, Bayliss was the man who went in pursuit of Tozen but couldn't hang on last time when his tyre went off. Now we presume he's gone for the hardest compound this time. He's got the hardest rear tyre on, but he's um, gone to a softer front. So, And I picked in the last race that it looked like he was having trouble with the front. Here's Haga inside of Lanzi. He's so brave. He's so brave, Noriyuki Haga. And again, thrilling this Aston crowd as he has done for the last decade. And out of the last corner they come. Down the straight. Over 270 kilometers per hour. <laughs> fifth gear. See the body movement of Haga. He, he got in his slipstream, passed him. This was the second time, like, like proving a point, saying, hey, get out of my way, I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. And uh, just moved straight back across uh, in front of Lanzi. Haga did a 139.8 there, and he's faster than all the men in front of him, including James Tozen, who did a 140.1. So an intriguing start, and Bayliss right where he needs to be. So all the contenders, including this man here, Max Biaggi, Massimiliano Biaggi of Rome, right there in fifth place. Ahead, of course, at Kagiyama still in the fight, and then it drops back a little bit to Laconi in eighth, Neukirtner ninth, and Nieto tenth. Max Biaggi's in a position now which is probably quite comfortable for him. He's not surrounded by too many people, too many bikes, and he's just got four targets in, in front of him. So just watch his progress over the next few laps. Yeah, he's got Corsa behind, but I just wonder with his injuries whether the Corsa, but then again, when Corsa's angry, it tends to be fast, so who knows? Bayliss, though, is keeping an eye on Tozen. I think he's learned, has the old fox, that uh, Tozen is fast, and he just needs to stay that distance at least, but no more. There's the gap between them for the last few laps. But he doesn't want it any more than that. If it's over a second, Tozen's got this in the back. So he's got to keep it within 0 0.6, 0 0.7 every time. The problem for Bayless is Noriyuki Haga's coming. So it's going to, um, I think, another two laps and Noriyuki Haga will be right on the back wheel of Bayless. You know, Haga's the sort of guy that when you're about five years old, you'd hate to have him at your birthday party. You'd have everything organised, you'd have everything <laughs> out, you know, you'd have all your party thrills. And Haga would come in and probably destroy everything. Well, at open five, all your presents, yeah, throw exactly. all the confetti around, and even eat the cake, wasn't, and then leave. that wasn't his party, he'd But everybody else presents. would love him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The wonderful terror. We've all had parties like that. But Haga's having his own, and he's in a real mood of his own at the moment. It's great to see because Haga has got his mind set on the World Championship for the first time in many years. He's always been good, he's always been close, but this is as close as he's come to really challenging. And look how close he is to Bayliss right now in third place. And he is about to spoil the party of both the world champion and the world champion to be possibly James Tozen. Here he comes. 
I said two laps, but um, it's only half a lap, and he's, he's right on the back wheel of him. He's come from 15th, remember? Mm. Zaus had rejoined, but has crashed again at post 16, so Ruben is not going to be too happy. He's not going to be having any parties this afternoon or this evening. So that is a big blow for Zaus, you know. Zaus was right up there, and um, in terms of the championship, was uh, really knocking on the door of Corsa and Lanzi, but now that's all over, and he's going to have to be rebuild it again at Monza, but he will. Tozen, though, building his lead, was 0.6. Check on what the end of this lap, but uh, while Bayliss was trying to eke out some that gap and trying to pull away from Harger, he's not been able to make any ground across the line. They come and Harger's right there with Troy Bayliss. Will he make a move up the inside of the first corner? No, he doesn't. The gap now 1.1, and as I said before, Bayliss needs to keep it closer than that. So he's got pressure behind and pressure in front. Harger is not hanging about. Flames pouring out of the back of that beautifully made up R1. Harger rides so close to other bikes. But you know what? Back. Oh, he's up the inside. He's up the inside. It's Ruben. I asked the I'd riders about that, and to a man, none of them have a problem with the way Harger rides. Ah, except Neil Hodgson. <laughs> yeah, well. I remember Neil Hodgson saying he's a lunatic. Well, yeah, but, but he, he also said in the same sentence that. Um, be that as it may, he's never feared racing with, with Norrie. It's no. always exciting, it's always exhilarating, and he will take the risk that very few men will take. But uh, he is a fair racer, and he does ride right on your tailpipe. But um, but he never, you know, he's in total control. He's not a man out of control. Bayless ran a little bit wide there. They're, they're all really pushing hard to try and stay on... on pace with, ah, oh, there it, Hager up the inside of Bayless. Hager's made it, so second place to Noriyuki Hager, and we'll see now in the next lap or so whether Bayless can stay with him. I think he can. Watch him fight back. Yeah, I think uh, it won't be long before Bayless has another go. Down the flip-flop, left, right, then they go towards DeBolt, and then to the long right hand at the back. Biaggi's past Lanzi, Lanzi just going backwards now. On to the main straight then comes James Tozer to complete another lap. The gap is 0.8, so they've kept it down. So the, f the battle between Harger and Bayliss is dragging them towards Tozerland. He did have 1.1, but uh, Harger and Bayliss' battle. Biaggi up to fourth. Impressive stuff by the four-time 250 world champion. Biaggi's going to be on the podium. OK, prediction there. I can just see him building and building and building. Oh, and look how much they've taken out of Tozen. Now, whether Tozen made a mistake or not, he did have 0.8, but look how close it is now. It's Harger and Bayliss right there with him, and Biaggi on the way. Biaggi did a 140.2, three tenths quicker than Tozen last time out. And interestingly enough, Harger and Bayliss were likewise quicker than Tozen. So Tozen uh, has been caught and been caught quickly. Well, I think. Yeah, Harger's the man doing doing the moving in the in the bunch, and he's he's tried to Bayless has tried to go with him. Harger's going to have a very fast lap this time around, and he's he's the one that he's closed up a hell of a lot in one lap. I know, and he's left uh, Bayless there too. There's Corsa still. Corsa needs to get past Lanzi as quick as he can. Try and hang on to the back of Biaggi. Beautiful sounds of these Ducatis flying around the Aston circuit. Beautiful sunshine here in April. The day before Queen's Day here in Holland, a massive national holiday. But right now, Superbikes is the focus and the attention. Oh, no, no. <laughs> he's got such a different line through there. He always does, yeah. He always looks as though he's going to have a make, make a manoeuvre, but he didn't that time. Tozen knows he's there now. It's Yamaha versus Honda. Cross the line comes Tozen. The gap now just down to point 0.1. It was point 0.8 last lap. And a 139.8, so close to his own lap record that time of 139.7. Harger is absolutely flying. And somehow Bayliss is stuck with it. He did a 140.2. So Bayliss has done a tremendous job of hanging on the back of these two. But uh, Tozen knows he's in a war now. Well, I think what Noriyuki Hager's... This is, this is um, James's worst section of the track, the first section, and that's where they seem to come a lot closer together and from here on in he'll start to pull away a little bit. I'll be interested to see Max Biaggi if he can um, get onto the back of Troy Bayliss now. That, that's what's going to um, trouble Troy. 
Well, if you can do it, it would make some interesting last few laps, wouldn't it? Well, there's a long way to go. We're only seven laps uh, in. Yeah, I'm going to say, this is almost as though they're winding themselves up for the last three laps. Not at all. With seven laps in, it's Tosin Hager, Bayliss, Biaggi in fourth. Lanzi still hanging in there in fifth place. And Corsa's off the back there in sixth. But the real battle is at the front. Hager, surely, from 15th place, is making a monumental attack on the championship leader. And Hager's got his own thoughts on this year's championship. He does truly believe, with the help of Corsa and the team that they've got, he can win this championship. Well, what's going to happen now? Hager's going to run into the trouble that Troy Bayliss ran into. Uh, where do you pass James Toesland? Here! <laughs> no, not quite. Not quite. It's it's going to be really hard and uh, if, if he makes a move he it probably will run wide and uh, James will get back in front. Into James the last corner. Got, got this place inch perfect every corner. Oof, that was a moment there for Hager. He lost a tenth or so across the line. Let's check the times. 0 0.07 nothing between him. Hager jinks out and goes for the lead. Can't do it. Bayliss is waiting in third. And these three now pulling away from Biaggi in fourth. And look how close Harger is. He's right you. on the back tyre. He rides a little bit too close. Now, I will think. he have a go at Struben? Struben, the first gear coming up. This is all right hand, right hand, right hand. And now they flick. Straighten the bikes up and go left hand. And Harger will look up the inside, but he can't quite get close enough. And look at the difference now. Bayliss is right there. As they exit Struben, Bayliss is right there with them. Down the back straight they go. Three abreast. It's a freight train once again at Assen. There's Biaggi, there's Lanzi. Corsa still waiting to try and get past Lanzi. Kagiyama is seventh and Nieto's up in the top eight. Well, we can just sit and wait for this to unfold, Ooh, can't just, we? Oh, yeah. This is, this is <laughs> a moment of silence while we pause. Yeah. There's three of them in it now, and That's I great. think Biaggi will, will come. He's a little bit slower, a couple of tenths slower. Here he right. comes! Oh, and yes. into the lead goes Noriyuki Haga and the Yamaha. The King of Samurai is through, and he slices nicely through there. And Tozen's having to uh, eat a bit of humble pie for now. Just for a corner or two, I think. Look at that. On the grid, 15. Lap one, five. <laughs> now he's first. Unbelievable. It's taken Look him nine James. laps. Oh, got a good run through there. Bayless is keen to have a, a get in on this as well. Yes, he is. What is all that? And about? Bayless, here he comes into second place. So Tozen goes from first to third in three corners. That's superbike racing for you at its finest. And the crowd on their feet now because they realise that Bayliss is in with a chance and Harger leads the way. Great stuff. Remember, Yamaha based here, or Yamaha Europe based here. This is the Italian Yamaha team going back to their home race at Monza next week or two weeks' time. They would love nothing more than to arrive at Monza with a win. Yeah, I'll say, uh, but um, the, the people behind them are, are still keen to do this too. Biaggi was quicker than the first three guys then. Uh, so he's he's pulled in about a third of a tenth, a third of a second. How much more impressive does Bayliss look in uh, this this race compared to the first one? Well, yeah, but we're still early. It's it's nine laps, and uh, yeah, but I get excited early. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that's good. <laughs> it's good, and uh, let's just hope things keep together with um, tyre management. There's the laps of Tozen for the last few laps on lap eight. Very impressive indeed. No one's got close to Hargis' time of 139.7. And that's the lap record, and he leads the race from 15th, remember. There's the gap. It was 2.2. It's 1.1 on lap 9. 22 laps in all. They've gone for the hardest tyre. The heat has gone up here. Pirelli are confident they've got a race tyre that'll last 22 laps, and that's given Bayliss the confidence he needs. And as I said at the start of the race, this is a massive afternoon for Troy Bayliss, the world champion. If he's going to have any chance of retaining that world title, he has to strike now because it could be too late if he lets them have any more. He's and here he comes! Oh, on cue, thank you very that. much, Troy. Just do exactly that. Round the oh, outside! Oh, two oh. Buffalo girls, and there you go! <laughs> and James Tozen go round the outside. Fantastic! Oh, end up! Oh no, I thought that was going to be a bit too much. Oh, we're just going to run into tyre tire territory soon, and um, that's going to be the deciding factor here. Who's got the bike set up to manage the tyres the best? Well, this is turning into a classic Assen race, and over the years we've had a double win from Troy Bayliss in 2001. Colin Edwards took the double in 2002. Zaus won one. He's out of this one. Neil Hodgson, of course, in 2003 on his title quest. Tozen took one in 2004. So too did Vermeulen. And here again in 2007, Harger has stepped up to the plate from 15th. I still can't believe it. And he's out there leading the way. And how far is Biaggi? 1.5 seconds in fourth place. Not far behind at all. He's coming. He's coming. Just a little bit at a time. James pulls out and... Uh, Back to the lead. Oh, Norrie's got problems. Oh, Norrie's got out. problems. He's, he's gone wide. 
he's, he's pulled off. It wasn't what a, a shame. breaking that problem, is, yeah. something's gone wrong. Oh. Oh, what a shame. The R1 it? and ejected Lee, he's pulling it over to the side. And that is a massive loss for him and a great opportunity from Bayliss. Harga third in the championship. Now, we've had a monoconic mechanical problem that spat Corsa off in the first race. Now suddenly, the edges are starting to fray here on this new R1. We said it was going to be the greatest bike. It's got all the potential. It won at Donington Park. And now suddenly, here at Assen, it's all falling apart. What happened there? Not sure, but um, at least it wasn't as bad as what happened to Troy Corsa. It wasn't uh, a, a case of something locking up and spinning him off. Uh, yeah, and guess who's gained from it? That man, Max. I told you he'd be on the podium. Well, <laughs> he's in a podium position at the moment. Certainly is, and that must have really given him uh, a forethought, 11 of the 22 gone, and you know that Biagi's strong towards the end of the race, but now he's got the two toughest competitors in the series in front of him in James Tozen and Bayliss. And here we go again, Bayliss against Tozen. Yeah, I feel really sorry for Hager because the guy's got his act together as a rider and he, he can keep it all together on the track and, and be on the podium week in, week out. So I feel really sorry for him. And uh, the man that's, as you said, benefiting is uh, number 21, Troy Bayliss. Well, this is a fascinating battle, the youngster and the master, and it's just come at the worst time in Bayliss's career. Last year, it was plain sailing. This year, Tozen has definitely made a plan to get in his way, and so far, it's certainly gone all James Tozen's way. And as I said, I think psychologically, Bayliss needs this one just to show the youngster that he's still around and means business. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's I, I, At the start of the season, I don't think Troy Bayliss thought he'd... Uh he'd be under so much threat from uh, James Tozen because throughout pre-season testing, the 10 Carter boys weren't, they were there, but they weren't um, leading the way on the timing sheets and come the races, they've just turned everything around and, and they've got a great race package. Both riders very smooth indeed, very few mistakes made and that's why it's so hard for Bayliss, especially at a track like this where there's fewer places to overtake and uh, it's just, uh, it's hard to force somebody to a mistake here as well, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, this, this championship is all about not making mistakes and, oh, Bayless looks up the inside. He's well, gonna run nice. wide, surely. He may not. Well, he's gonna, he's gonna do it, you know. <laughs> Great move. And that was at a very fast fifth gear. Last but one corner. Bayless very strong, showing James the way there. He leads in lap 12. Now, will we see the typical style of Bayless trying to get and pull away from Tozen, or will he just go about his business? 140.2 from Bayliss last time. Very quick lap, four tenths quicker than Tozen. And look, he is pulling away, you know. I think he's comfortable, he's confident. And that could be significant. I'd just give James um, a, a few corners to compose himself and, and then he'll be back on it. Okay. That was that was a move that wouldn't, um, okay, Bayliss did a 40.2 on that lap, but um, it, it wasn't um, an ideal line but he had to do it to get past because um, James is so fast everywhere that it's really hard to, to make a move. But James should be able to um, just settle down and reel him back in. Bayless yeah, has you say that, look at the gap he's pulled yeah, already. Yeah, but though. you watch this lap of Bayless. He, he's on it now to try and break James Toes. Well, he's doing it. But he won't be able to keep this space. This, this lap, this will be a really fast lap, I'm sure, but he won't be able to do this for the next 10 laps. Okay. Well, we're about to find out. And Piaggi is looming ever larger in the background in third place. This is a real battle for the championship, without a doubt. I said it was an important one for Biaggi, likewise for Bayliss, and poor old Haga, unfortunately, significantly, is out of this one, and that does make it significant to the others involved, because Haga is going to be a factor all year, and now with him out of this one, both Bayliss and Biaggi have to score well, if not win this race. Here they come then, down to the last corner, where Bayliss took the lead. Already, Troy Bayliss on his lap board will have this gap. They would have checked this from around the back of the circuit so, so they can tell him how he's going. Let's just check his lap time. Well, we can tell you what it is. It's exactly 0.7. Now, yeah. remember, James led him by that much a few laps ago. Mm. So what what will happen now, Troy will be trying to do everything he can to break, make a break. And if James can stay there and just, if, if it's 0.6 the next lap, then 0.5, then 0.4, Bayless knows, oh, I'm not breaking him. He's he's right with me. He's going to stay there. We saw it at Donington. Troy tried to go exactly away. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's always been his cat tactic. Uh, he, oh, and there is a moment for James Tozen, and it's working right now. Well, it can work in the reverse effect, actually. Bayless tries to break them, and James Tozen will try harder and harder and start to come into some troubles himself. There's 
toes on the Biaggi. 1.5, 1.3, 1.3. So consistently there at 1.3 at the moment. I think Malus is probably actually going to open the gap up a little bit on this lap. Well, Bayless has made himself the hair. He's out front. Derek the Rabbit, that is Tozan, is right there in second. Derek the Rabbit. Ah, oh, yes, it's his uh, nickname. Derek the Rabbit. Well, he's playing that role at the moment. And like I said, I think you've got to wonder when he's going to react. Because if he doesn't in the next few laps, Bayless will be gone. I think he could be Freddy the Fox. Well, you, you know that this is a game now between these two. And it's been yeah. played out from Australia to Donington. And uh, we're here doing it again. I think I, I just love it because it, it basically it's a psychological battle between these two. There's nothing between the bikes. It's all a case of who wants to push hardest, who dares wins very much so. And now the gap's still 0.7. But that's Bayless's best lap of the race. Yeah, 140.069. But the gap's still 0.7. And Tozen reacted well because that was one of Tozen's better laps too. 140.028. So nothing really between them. Here's the fight for back, back down around... 7th and 8th, ninth, 10th place, well, even more. Muggeridge in the top 10, Schmertz up there in 11th place, Laconi's dropped down to 12th, Kagiyama also having been right up there in 8th position, now down to 13th, I think that was a mistake on track by him, Brooks is there in 14th, Nakatomi in the point scoring positions. There's Rolfo, and you think that definitely if Rolfo doesn't start pulling the finger out supposedly, that uh, he's in trouble. Well. You know, he's in eighth place at the moment and um, behind another Honda, Fabrizio, and, and uh, his teammates have been dominating, so he, he should be closer to the front, and yeah, he, he is under pressure. That's the story in, in the paddock at the moment. Well, JT's under pressure at the moment because look at uh, the way Bayliss is riding, and this would make things very interesting indeed. Well, no, I think if all he needs to do is um, sort of sit there because... James knows he's got the package to do 22 laps. On his 20th lap in the last race, he was only a couple of tenths off his fastest lap of the race. So right at the end of the race, James has got the package to do the job. The gap bar is, isn't that isn't so bad. Well, I think um, it's going up, to be fair. We'll find out as they come to complete the next lap. Bayless is going to try and put five really fast laps together now, and, and that's going to work his tyres really hard. Number three, Suzuki Max Biaggi, 140.057, and Tozen reacts brilliantly with a 139.9 at the halfway, over halfway stage of this race to try to counteract Bayliss's attack. That's all he has to do, as I said, just get the, because Bayliss's board will have on it 0.7, now it'll have 0.5 that last time around. What his plan isn't working. Well, it didn't work at Donington, and did it because he had to push so hard to stay ahead of James Tozen that eventually he pushed to the point where he, he fell off. We're 15 laps into it, and James, uh, the gap became a little bit too much. I hope James can pull that back because um, we're running out of laps. You know, though, I think Bayliss expects this, and Bayliss just wants to be in a position to fight for the win. And, you know, given that it's 15 of the 22 gone, he knows where James is, he knows that James will catch, he's riding within his limits, and then it's a case of getting wide. As we've said already, get your elbows out, this is Assen. Um, there's nowhere to overtake, and if you ride defensively, it's very, very hard to overtake. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Bayliss has um, got to think about if he will stay riding within his limits, because sometimes he... He lets things go a little bit too far. Well, I had a quiet word with James just before the start of the race, and I said, look, if it is a fight with two or three riders, where are you going to go? And he said, well, there is just one spot, third gear, back of the circuit, uh, where you're trying to get across the track to get for the next corner. You can nip up, which is what we've seen Harger do. Right. And uh, you may just see that. Lanzi and Corsa still in their battle. This is for fourth place, remember. Corsa, despite being spat off in race one, is what? going strong. Now, let's take a look at it. A 139.8 again. So close to the lap record set by Harger, who is out of this race if you've just joined us. Harger scintillating pace, leading the race, and then mechanical gremlins struck. 139.8 compared to 140.7, so he was three tenths quicker. So again, uh, just reeling him in bit by bit, James Tozen, but 16 gone. And you just wonder what Bayliss has got in reserve, if anything. Well, you know... He takes a look over his shoulder, an interesting oh, time. Is. You don't need to look too far, there he is. Troy Bayliss, the, the bottom line is, James Tozen has the best um, package out there this weekend. 
And Troy Bayless does And Bayless does it. knows it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But Troy Bayless is fair play to him. He's playing a great game to, um, to do the best he can with what he's got. And uh, that's all it is now. It's a game between these two to, to push the, the machinery and the equipment to the limit. Well, and I actually think that was a bit of a cat and a mouse. And they said, hey, you coming or what? He, well, he, he exactly. want, I mean, he wants exactly. to fight with Tozen because he doesn't want to... Well, he wants to keep Tozen behind him and he wants to keep it close. Because, as you said, I think it's a case now of limiting Tozen. Now, Tozen did a similar game to this at Phillip Island when uh, he knew that, basically, that uh, Bayless was faster and he couldn't stick with him, but yeah. he just held him off and just was defensive. Yeah. So it's payback time for Bayless now in this one. Well, it was the same at Donington. He, he was going to do the... Yeah. Just follow him and uh, push him. And, and James Tozen would have finished second in both races if Troy Bayless had have stayed on, probably. And But he would have just keep, kept applying the pressure as he's doing now, Troy Bayliss has gone out and as I said, he's done four or five laps really hard, really clean, as fast as he can to see if he could uh, break James Tozen, but he hasn't been able to do and that. they're so both on the 140 pace now, yeah. So now he's looked back and said, right, well, that didn't work. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a, a last lap, last corner thing. And you can see, by the way, by their body language, that neither of them are are pushing over the top. Uh, they're, they're at a very fast pace, but they're not trying to challenge each other right this moment. That's going to come in a few laps' time. Biaggi, meanwhile, in third place, is four seconds adrift of this battle. And I think, there you go, there you see him. I think uh, it's going to have to settle for a third place. Yeah, again, Biaggi doesn't have the package of uh, these two, so not able to, to get on, on the pace. Some back markers in the way now, and uh, making sure they get out of the way as quickly as possible. There's the Czech rider. Morelli also in front of them, so one one down. Here's another man on the race line somewhat. But there is only one line through here, and there he gets out, out of the way. Tozen going through with Bayliss. This is where JT's good. Believe it or not, the next man up is a point-scoring Carl Muggeridge. So that's how quick these guys are going. And this really is poetry in motion. Come dancing at Assen. The two of them going toe-to-toe. -to -toe waltzing around this beautiful circuit in the sunshine and it won't feel like ballroom dancing for them that's for sure but it's synchronization on Honda and Ducati cross the line they come Bayliss does a 140.5 toes in a 140.6 nothing between them Biaggi's going off the pace if anything the gap going up to 4.5 seconds Bayliss a little bit of a back Tire wobbling a little bit there out of that last corner. I think hanging that, on in there. I think they both had a go, a real good go. Well, Bayless had a real good go, and uh, Tozen decided not to let him go and caught him up again. And now they're having a bit of a break. Another look from Bayless. He is uh, keeping a watchful eye as he comes out of Struben as to where James is on track. He's not, it's not so much he's not believing his board, it's just a case of he's just trying to work out. Oh no! lanzi has gone down. And that's a significant down as well, because Lanzi was in fourth place. Corsa's now up to fourth. Biagi's still third. Here's tight, what happened. Tight hairpin behind the pits, yeah. So, Struben has finally caught out one rider, and it is Lorenzo Lanzi. And that's not good news for the young Bologna Bullet headed to Monza next time out. Good news for Roberto Rolfo, though. He'll, he'll be up to fifth position now, but he's got a gaggle of riders right behind him. Tense moments in all the pits. And, well, that look over the shoulder from Bayliss, what did it tell him? Well, same story, you know, same as the lap before. He's he's right there. And um, I think uh, where he looked, James was actually a little bit little bit back. At that point, it was half a second behind. Good drive he, by he Tozen, Tozen, look at that. Yeah. Great drive out of the last corner. He just seems so much more effortless through there. And now, look at the pace he's brought to it. Not quite, watch, though. Watch Bayless. Is he going to run wide? Yeah, he had to break very late to hold yeah, off Tozen yeah. there. And it is a case of when Tozen will make a move. And he can make that last chicane the way he did. No question that uh, uh, Tozen's on a more stable setup. And uh, Bayless is just riding the wheels off that machine right now. There's not much left in that Ducati, I tell you that. both spinning the rear tyre. Oh, James was in the dirt then. That's lost him a little bit of time. It has, hasn't it? Yeah, significantly. There's a couple of bite lengths now between the two of them. 
So, Bayliss on the move yet again. An important weekend for him. It's funny, when you look at the whole season, this is where championships are won. Well, this I said it's a pivotal weekend. You know, I mean, you're right. Uh, and I knew that Bayliss would have to come out and come out strong this weekend. And that's exactly what he's done. He got a good race result in race one. Cup put himself back into contention. He's right there. And a good result here from this race and we'll put him back still in fourth place but on 128 points with Harger out of this one it just moves him ever oh, closer oh Tosland coming through thank oh, you oh he's going to run wide oh now Bayless will run wide on the exit and here Come comes Tosland neck and neck this is superb and there is no Oof. space left for any other body else in this fight what a race we've got on the penultimate lap Bayless versus Tosland the world champion against the championship leader. Into the first corner goes Bayliss, leading the way. Whoa. This is going to get exciting. As, as I was it saying, is. It, this, is, <laughs> this is where championships are won, and even if you have to settle for second, it, it makes all the difference at the end of the year, but um, we don't really want James to settle for second at the moment. Tozen looking to get the drive out of Struben. First gear, 63 kilometers, up through the gears now. Watch them click it through. Right hand side, over the shoulder, takes another look. That's how close he is. And, uh, well, I'm surprised he even looked then because he must have known that Tozen was there. And they both passed each other, but I think that Bayliss is on the ragged edge right now. He's going to have to really drive and ride defensively here. Ride as wide as he possibly can because Tozen is already corner right speed. there with him. Look at the corner speed Tozen takes through on the Dutch May 10 car to Honda. The pole man. James Tozen going for the double here in Assen. Bayliss looking for a famous victory to put himself back into contention. Watch Tozen through here. Watch the drive he gets out. Ooh, oh, and a wiggle there. Come on, James. Up to fifth gear. James Tozen surely got a chance to pass it. He yeah. does. Takes the lead. Turn now, it, turn it. turning it tight goes Bayliss. Fantastic overtaking manoeuvre. Master stroke. But here comes Tozen around the outside. Can't do it, surely. Crowd going wild. Bayliss holding on to the lead. We're on to the last lap. Fantastic racing. And it's 21 versus 52. You want to fight? Here we go. Yeah, this is it. This is boys in the backyard. This is fantastic stuff. Who's going to take it? It's a real scrap. Wide slightly in the first corner. Into Mardike for the last time. Tozen right there into the long right-hander. All second gear through here, but over 100 kilometers an hour. Don't try this at home, as they say. And now on the inside, here comes Tozen. Can't get good there. And he's going to try and get the drive again. Let's off a little bit, puts the power on early. And now he'll go in pursuit of Bayliss. But look at the body language. Over the shoulder, he takes a look. Are you coming? Are you playing? You certainly are. Here he comes. And Bayliss looking for a famous victory. He won here, of course, back in 2001. That's when he won the title. But Bayliss was the first to remind me at the beginning of this weekend, I've won a title here and I've lost a title here. Well, he could be doing just that here right now against this youngster, James Tozen. The 2004 winner has already won race one. But right now, Bayliss is holding on for dear life. He's hanging on to that Ducati like there's no tomorrow. And Tozen is all over him like a green and white rash. Here they come then. Fast few corners here. Who's going to win it? Well, well, I don't want to know. I don't want to. I just want to close my eyes. But Tozen out of here is very fast indeed. He's got the run again. Definitely Tozen. Oh. Looks fast, but then gets a wiggle on, loses a bit of time. Does take the lead, but will now. Bayliss comes back. Bayliss comes up the inside. Can't do it. Holding on there. Tozen's got a chance of taking victory here. Just one slow more down, corner to go. And he's very fast into the last down. corner. And he's blown it. Not quite. Brilliant stuff. And he's done it! We what are finally superstar. talking what? double dutch or oh, not! Oh, no. Bayless got it! Bayless no. got it! Well, I am talking Bayless double got dutch! It. Unbelievable! Because Bayless might well have done it on the last second of the race. Look at the gap. 0. 0. 0.009. What is that? <laughs> Tenth, hundred, nine thousandths of a second. Ah, it's unbelievable. Well, <laughs> well, from double hero to Bayliss taking a win, and you know what? I said Bayliss needed to do something special, and he's done it. Do you know? Absolutely I mean, fantastic! A true champion's ride. 
And I just wonder what poor old James Tozen must be thinking. Here let's, it is. Let's get a replay. What's James Tozen? Does he celebrate a fraction early here? Just watch as they go across the line. Yes, he did. He shouldn't have done that. He pulled a wheelie. He shouldn't have done that. That's what lost him the race. Oh. He should have kept his head down, moved a little bit more to the right. He, he lifts it up here. What? See? He thought he'd won it. Oh. That's going to be heck to pay because you're quite right. That's the uh, uh, yank on the handlebars. <laughs> that, you know, and I'll tell you what, helmet off. That is a massive win, and I said it's a psychological blow. That crowd is cheering for Bayliss, a true champion. Tozen's got work to do. He's been beaten by the master, and it is master and pupil for sure. That has pretty much, as I said, laid it down. Mate, you may have got away well. I've lost a finger. I've had a few problems down under, but I'm back, and I am coming to Monza, where Ducati always goes strong. Sure, yeah, they... It's, it's their track for certain next race, but um, I think James Tozen actually won the race. He beat Troy Bayless then, but he's, he's well. What can you say? To, Look, yeah. moment there between the two of them, and uh, they're both great sportsmen. But uh, I think Troy Bayless has got his work cut out for him, not James Tozen. Well, that has been a superb victory. And let's take a look at it. The result, Bayless, Tozen, Biaggi. And that's a significant result for Biaggi as well. Third place. Corsa, good in fourth place. A good result. And Roberto Rolfo, well, he's done what you asked him, which has come good. And he's got a decent result from that. Fabrizio takes a top six finish. Good for him. Neukirchen and Nieto. Schmertz gets in the top ten. Laconi, likewise, finishes tenth. K Kagiyama in eleventh. Nakatomi, Brooks, Morelli and Svoboda taking championship points for the Czech Republic. Now, let's have a look at the championship because Bayliss moves to 128. Hagen without scoring has 144. So Bayliss now fourth, but really hotting up nicely because Corsa's still in the mix. Zaz is in the mix, and so's Lanzi. Neukirk was not that far behind on 71 points. This is the most open championship we've had in a long, long time, and it's got some real superstar heroes in it. Not the days of 2004 where nobody wanted it. This is the day 2007 where everybody wants it. And Max Biaggi won't be disappointed. Well, he will, but uh, third place is a good result. And uh, keeps him in contention and keeps him ahead of Harger. He's bugging. <laughs> I tell you what, he's delighted. He knows he actually won across the line from, um, from JT. Pulling a wheelie a little bit too early. I just cannot believe... Well, I can believe that... James to uh, Joe's toes had thought he had it because as he came through the chicane, he well, was ahead. Yeah, usually out of here, because the start finish line's so close, um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even think that you don't usually have that trouble. He knows he did the ball. Well, what a difference an hour or two makes because jubilation for a very emphatic win in race one. And uh, uh, James will know more than anyone what was going through his mind at the, at the end of that race. He knew, like you say, he thought he'd won it. And we've Look seen some it. bizarre things. We've seen Foray thinking he was on the last lap in Supersport. And now we've seen James Tozland. Yeah. He, but anyway, you know, it's that's five points and uh, it's better than Donington where he, he didn't finish in one race. And, uh, 45 points from the weekend for JT is a good, good haul. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, that double... Lose him. It'll come. I can't believe it. He was so close. Well, there you go. There's your standings. 196, 164, 144 Hager, but Bayliss significantly moves from sixth to fourth, 128. It's been a big weekend for the world champion. He is back and back with a vengeance. Rolfo still in the top ten. Nieto moving to 10th with 46 points, likewise Fabrizio. These youngsters, uh, or these juniors, if you like, of the series still up there and scoring points. But uh, we can see the pattern now developing between Tozen. I've noticed that Ronald and Gerard aren't down in the uh, part firmer this time. You know, I, like, I, I think there are an incredible amount of talent in, in this field, in this paddock, in, in Superbike. But, but James is the best. Well, he certainly started that way, got off the line well, but so too did Biaggi. Here are the highlights. Biaggi taking the whole shot into Holbert. On the first lap, Tozen slotting into second place. And again, amazingly, 
Parker right up there, seventh place after the first turn. Biagi, what was he thinking? Bad move, but Struben lost him about five places and he then had to fight his way through again. And he dropped all the way down to about eighth place. Zaus trying to go up the inside of Lanzi and you have to say, no room at the inn. And poor old Zaus, poor old Zaus goes down. Biagi hauled on and Corsa right behind him. Parker, bit by bit, made his way through, and it was about, what, lap five, lap six, that he got through to the lead. An incredible rider this man is. 15th to first, and he stayed out there as well. Then came Bayliss up the inside of Tozen, and he started to make his challenge. As the three-way battle then ensued between them, it was a good one too, wasn't it? Bayliss looking a lot stronger than he did in race one, and then Harger, out of nowhere, boom. Something went wrong with that bike, we'll find out what. And he pulled it off and that was the end of that. And then Bale is very, very strong up the inside of Tozen. And it led to a cracking battle, psycho psychological battle. Lanzi went down at Struben as well. But no problem for the other Ducati. He continued to lead the race. Tozen would make his charge and hit the front, but then Bayliss would react. Cat and mouse all through this and both riders really riding right at the top of their game. Nothing in it. And there's the penultimate lap. Bayliss leading. And then a moment for Tozen. He knew he was quick. He knew he was strong there. And he made it count through there. He's always been strong there. And it looked as though it was his. And he certainly came very hot into that last corner. And was leading with less than what? 80 yards to go. And right at the line. Unbelievably so. Bayliss takes victory from Tozen. Well, that is rubbing your face in it. They both deserve to win, to be honest. It was a, a fantastic race. But as I said, I, James Toseland, I, I remember in 2004 when he won the title, the strength, the mental strength that, that he could put together. And maybe he didn't put it together every race back then, but um, this year he's putting it together every race. And that was a fantastic last lap, especially on those fast, uh, fast corners leading up to the last turn. And uh, yeah, that's why I said I, th I think he is the best. Five wins. Bayliss now with two. And that is significant. Bayliss, of course, won at Phillip Island in race one. But it hasn't had much to celebrate. And this will really change his outlook on this title chase. Because he goes to Monza now full of confidence. Two weeks' time. Ducati at home in Italy. It's got to be on, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. That's that's done Troy Bayliss the world of good because he does get a little bit down in the dumps and, you know, get a bit uh, ruffled by things. But um, to, to come back out, and he, he, Troy knows that he probably doesn't have the best package today and, and to be able to win. Well, that's it. When you win with a, an inferior package, that's when you really feel good. Yeah. And, well, it's hotting up. Ducati moving to 173. It's a big weekend for them. Moved ahead of Yamaha and Suzuki. And the battle is on. Honda's still out of front, of course, with five wins. Not surprising. And, uh, yeah, I think the manufacturer's battle is going to go all the way this year as well. What a weekend. And, uh, yeah, that truly was some excellent stuff. And a man from Tari, Tari Terrier, doing it again at Assen. Here it is. Here's another look at it. And there you see James Tozen. Surely he's got it won now. Heads towards the line. He's got the drive. He knows the Honda's fast. And he pulls a wheelie. Just as the bike came up, he probably noticed that red thing to his right. Mm. Yeah, it was probably... A, that must have been... <laughs> talk about the highs and lows in an instant. One minute you cross the line, you think you've won. The next minute, boom. Oh, yeah. It's, you can see he's disappointed. And he's just sinking in now. What a disappointment. Oh, tonight. Tonight will be when he oh, lies down. I, I, I'm, I'm not knowing James as I do. He'll have nightmares tonight. He will <laughs> absolutely be kicking himself. Uh, he won't be consolable either. He, especially when he knows it's him. You know, when the, when the bike lets him down or he has a problem, he won't have any problem with uh, Troy, of course. That was fair, good square racing. And I mean, you know, that, that's a, another part of the learning curve. And I bet if you do interview James or you have a word with him or if you read the press about him, he'll be saying, well, I learned that one, didn't I? Mm, yeah, exactly. uh, and it's all part of the 26-year-old's learning curve because that can happen. I mean, it's funny, we were talking about the Supersport race and we were talking to one of the veterans, of course, James Whittam. And he said, you know, rule one, you guys were talking, rule one, you just don't celebrate. You keep your head down oh, if you're not sure. Exactly, yeah. You get past that line first and celebrate after Plenty you're back time in the to pits. celebrate afterwards, yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. Well, what can you say? 
easily done. It's easy sitting here, isn't it? Well, you know, I've seen Ruben Zouse celebrate on the slowdown lap at Magna Cor and crash. <laughs> well. Um, so it's better to get off the bike, actually, before you celebrate sometimes. That's uh, Troy Bayliss's main man. Ernesto Marinelli, yeah, and who's taken um, many a man two world titles. Mm. Troy said uh, if, if he wasn't there, Troy wouldn't be there. He wouldn't, he wouldn't go racing without him. Well, it's a close-knit community. And of course, most of this team helped him to that MotoGP victory at Valencia at the end of last year. I'll tell you what, this is good. You know, I mean, uh, if Tozen wasn't going to get the double, I really wanted Bayliss or Biaggi to get up there. And let's pause now for that Australian national anthem. And in a moment, hopefully a national anthem that will ring out in two weeks too, which is the Italian national anthem for Ducati. <laughs> so then, somewhat muted celebrations, not for Troy Bayliss, Maybe for James Tozen, and, and uh, well, I'm sure Kel will be gentle on him, but uh, you've got to ask the question, what were you doing celebrating? And uh, I'm sure he'll have an answer. There'll be a, a wry smile, but uh, here it is. Here's the story of the weekend. James Tozen, so close, and yet so far. Ecstasy to agony. In just a millisecond. You've got to think that you've won it from here. You go for the wheelie, and boom, that's all it took. I don't know how he feels. It's been a long time since that ever happened to me, but, um, yeah. And <laughs> Bayless just couldn't believe it. And here's when the moment where they joined up, he sort of shakes his hand and says, you, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. But that's racing, and you know what? Exactly. All's fair in love and war, and you know what? You, you, as I said, you just don't ever do that again. I mean, you know, you learn. And he's, you know, he's still learning his way. I mean, I've seen so many great finishes here. Uh, you know, Carl Fogarty has come within inches of, of, of winning and losing here at Assen, so often on the good side of it, 12 in all. And Ducati continue their domination of this circuit. Fantastic. How many times they've won, but uh, they're right up there. But one little bit of history. James now moves into the history books. He's now got 51 podiums mm. overall in all time. He's nowhere near the big boys yet, but um, he's hit a benchmark. And let's go down now to Kellett, who's got the top three, starting with Biaggi. Max, it's been a difficult weekend for you and the team, but finally a podium this afternoon. Yeah, you know, we're kind of happy for the second result in race two. We got a podium, but a little bit far from the top two guys. Looks like this track has been so hard for us uh, from beginning, from Friday. We try to solve all the problems for engine brake, go into the turn, but we couldn't find the right uh, choice. So we tested many things, always play around with electronic and uh, with a clutch. But it wasn't great. So race one, not so good. Race two, a little bit better. So. I want to go, I want to run to Rome, to Monza now and hoping then it's going to be a better weekend for us. Was the problem once the front had got away, it was difficult to catch up? Well, you know, these two guys have a good pace and much more confident than me. So uh, they deserve to be up there all the weekend, they're great, you know, they ride great. And uh, I do my best, so I did my best and I want to do my best the next round. So I can't wait for to go to Monza. Thanks a lot, Max. Thanks a lot, bye. James, so close but so far, what happened on that last corner? I had to ride so fast around the, the last left and I braked a little bit deep. Uh, the front went on me twice on the brakes and I went a bit wide and, uh, and the uh, Wiley Fox uh, come past me, didn't he? Uh, 
What a race. Um, so disappointed for the team and everybody in Holland not to have my first double, but um, I'm enjoying my riding. I'm enjoying racing uh, with Troy Bayliss. Um, it's uh, it's not doing me any harm trying to trying to keep up with that guy and uh, compliments to him and compliments to the team. A first and a second again. Um, Consistency is there. Uh, we haven't had the two wins yet, but it's coming. Um, so apologies for everybody for that. Um, I'm trying to put a smile on. I'm disappointed for, after trying so hard uh, for the second place instead of first. But uh, um, as I say, the battle with Troy was unbelievable. When you entered the final chicane, did you think the race was in the bag? No. You never think the race is in the bag with Troy Bayliss on the back of you. And um, as I say, I did lose the front twice going in. I went a, bit, a little bit deep and uh, I went a bit wide on the first apex, which I lost the drive coming onto the start and finish. And uh, um, I should have maybe covered my line a bit tighter coming into the start and finish uh, line. But um, I couldn't have done much more. I tried my hardest. Uh, this, uh, there was nothing else left in the bag, really. Troy was riding so well. Um, he was a little bit stronger than me at the first part. And then I was stronger than him at the second. And uh, it was just a bit of a cordial effect. But... Um, uh, I just enjoyed with that race so much. Thanks a lot, James. Cheers, thanks you. Avatar race winner. I know you never give up, you're Australian. Tell us about going into that last chicane. What was going through your mind? Uh, well, I thought I might, might have lost it there for a moment, but it was an incredible race. There was lots of action. Uh, I take my hat off to James. He's riding stronger and more confident all the time. He's certainly uh, really, really come on. He's certainly a man for the future, that's for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm happy, you know, to take a win, but I'm also very frustrated because after the first race, I thought I could have been, you know, possibly taken a win, and uh, we really struggled the last six laps with the with the front tyre, and we thought, you know, we just made a mistake and and didn't use the hard tyre, but then we did use the hard tyre in the second race, and like the last three laps, I was really really struggling again. So we have to put our heads together and work a little bit on the setting uh, because. Yeah, you just can't ride like that all the time. I was over the limit the last few laps, and honestly, James, we both like were cannot ride any harder. <laughs> you try and cover your lines, you try slow down in some corners, and then speed up. You try everything. James does the same, and it come the last chicane could have been anybody's. You know, like you might as well call it a tie. As close as that was it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and now looking forward to Monza. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd love to have a good result there in front of all the Italian fans. Uh, I've done very well there in the past. I think it's going to be more difficult for me this year, but uh, I'm looking forward to going there. Thanks a lot, Troy. Thank you. 71,000 fans given an absolute treat of Superbike Racing. Biagi doing the business, still struggling to get the setup right on that Suzuki, as he has done all weekend. Monza could be different. He got a podium, so it was saving face for the Italian, but what a weekend and what a race in race two between these two. James perhaps not admitting to that wheelie, but we saw it all clearly. And well, gracefully, Bayliss saying it was almost a dead heat. And the disappointment from James beaten by the master, but he will be back and he is the man of the future. And Bayliss won't be looking behind him too many times again because he is now back and now fighting for the title. A brilliant win by Troy Bayliss. He heads to Monza with his tail up, that's for sure. Ducati can be confident, but so too can James Tozen. He is the man of this moment. And the next round is just two weeks away at Monza in Italy. It should be fantastico. My thanks to Warwick Nall and I'm Jonathan Green. Until then, bye-bye for now.